نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم عما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي رب زدني علما اللهم فقنا في الدين اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما امين ثم امين so today inshallah we we'll, uh, will be starting by, with chapter number 4 that is gradual revelation now gradual as far as quran is concerned the way it was revealed it was different than the other books that were sent down by allah subhanahu wa taala for instance torah was given to musa alay salam and it was in the shape of tablets the whole of the book was in one form right so uh, as far as the quran is concerned it came down in different stages it came down uh, gradually and there were three stages mainly that were there so it was transmitted to us in a chain starting from allah almighty himself to the angel jibril and then to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so the the first stage in which quran was revealed uh, this you will learn that in the quran when the the topic of revelation is there you will see that there are two different form two different words they are used the, so the first the 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 word that is used is anzalna and the second word that is used is nazzalna nazzala yunazzilu tanzil right so there is there are different abwab and the root word is the same noon zai lam but the words are different and the verb form is different that means one word anzalna anzala uh nazala comes from nazala that means coming down all at once and nazala yunazzilu tanzil this means coming down gradually so Uh, even when you see these different words being used for the different types of revelations inshallah taala you will learn uh, which stage we are talking about so the first stage in which allah subhanahu wa taala had the quran written before any creation and the quran was put in preserved tablets in the seventh heaven and the quran mentions the preserved tablets in this verse bal huwa quranum majid fi lawhim mahfuz Nay, this is the glorious Quran inscribed in a preserved tablet. Inna hu la Quran un Karim fi kitabe maknoon, and this is indeed a noble Quran in a book well guarded. That is the lawhe mahfuz. So there is a name given to those tablets, those preserved tablets, and they are called lawhe mahfuz. And this is kitabe maknoon. This is a well guarded book. no one can go there no one can change it no one can read it only allah subhanahu wa taala has it with him and this is uh you know uh, this this had been there before the creation right the next stage from there from the lawhe mahfuz this quran was brought down to the first heaven so from the seventh heaven down to the first first heaven this uh quran was brought down in the second stage all at once all at once right so that is why now you will see that an unzila or anzalna this word is being used shahru ramadan alladhi unzila fihi alquran that the month of ramadan is the one in which quran was revealed this was, this revelation was basically done when in the month of ramadan in the shab e qadr now this shab e qadr became more important it is it was already important shab e qadr and then it became more important why because quran came down on this particular night to the first heaven and where was it placed in the first heaven because jibril uh, alay salam is known as jibril amin he had the amana given to him so jibril had been given this amana and for 23 years then later on for uh, in the stage 3 he brought these this amana down paste meal uh, step by step gradually as allah subhanahu wa taala advised him to do so 
coming back to the stage two, the place where uh, the Quran was um, uh, placed, uh, this in the first heaven, it is called Baytul Izza, right? This place is called Baytul Izza, the place of power and the place of honor. And uh, in another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzillahu fi laylatim mubaraka. Indeed, we have sent this Quran down in a very blessed night, a, a mubarak night. It's full of baraka. It's full of increase. And then in another place, Allah mentioned, Inna anzillahu fi laylatil qadr. This, this night is known as laylatil qadr. This is the night when the whole of the Quran was revealed to the first heaven, from the seventh heaven to the first heaven, given to Jibreel alayhi salam. Now the third stage. Now, when this th did this stage start, inshallah ta'ala, we are going to learn about that also. The total amount of years in for this stage was 23 years in which the Quran was sent down in response to the development of events and in accordance with the sequence needed to complete the delivery of the message. So basically, um, depending upon the context, depending upon the events taking place, the step by step ayahs came down in this third stage. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa Quranan. And the Quran, فَرَقْنَاهُ لِتَقْرَأَهُ عَلَى النَّاسِ عَلَى مُكْثٍ وَنَزَّلْنَاهُ تَنْزِيلًا And it is a Quran which we have separated by intervals that you might recite it to the people over a prolonged period. And we have sent it down progressively. نَزَّلْنَاهُ تَنْزِيلًا Now you can see that it is clearly mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the third stage was prolonged it uh, was it, it had it spanned over a large number of years and this is why the word nazalna is used right so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to read understand and teach the quran and implement it in our life based on the quran and sunnah one thing that i i i feel that the lessons drawn from the gradual revelation uh, in our life is that we also should take Quran uh, gradually, step by step. Some people think that you're learning the Quran and you should just, you know, all of a sudden you should start implementing everything, you start understanding everything. Rather, even in the life of the Prophet ﷺ and the companions, the Quran came down very gradually, step by step. Now the question arises, could there have been tempering in the Quran? Could there have been, because the Quran was coming down so slowly and gradually, could there have been a change in the Quran somewhere? Uh, so the first uh, answer is that no, this could not ever have been happened because this has been ruled out by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Firstly, the trustworthiness of Jibreel has been guaranteed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, Allah describes the angels in general as la yasbiqoonahu bil qawli wa hum bi amrihi ya'maloon. They do not speak until he has spoken and they act on his command. So this has been guaranteed that none of the angels ever do anything with their own will and they're only going to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Jibreel alayhi salam is known as a ruhul amin, the trustworthy spirit. So the first person who is bringing down the Quran, that is Jibreel alayhi salam, his trustworthiness is, um, and, and also the power, in another place his power is also mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, since he is very powerful, Nobody can come and smash, snatch any message from him. Nobody can force him to, um, you know, tell him something. And Jibreel alayhi salam brought down the message and none of the tempering was, could have ever been done in that stage when Jibreel alayhi salam had it with him, had the Quran with him, or when he was bringing it down. The second is that as the Prophet ﷺ was chosen by Allah to be the recipient of the Quran, Allah assured him that he ﷺ would not forget or miss any verse. 
when the prophet sallam used to hurriedly recite the verses from jibril in fear that he might forget allah revealed la tuharrik bihi lisanaka litajala bih inna alayna jam'ahu wa qur'ana fa idha qara'nahu fattabi' qur'ana move not your tongue concerning the quran to make haste therewith it is for us to collect it and to give you a muhammad the ability to recite it and when we have recited it to you then follow its recital the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was instructed to be patient and allow jibril to finish his recitation before he sallallahu alaihi wasallam should start reciting thirdly after having ensured that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam memorized the revelation allah then ordered him to convey the revelation that he sallallahu alaihi wasallam had been given and told him that a failure on his part to do so would mean a failure in his mission as a prophet so this is a very hard message this is a very strong message that was given to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by allah subhanahu wa taala as to not change or not hide any information ya ayyuhar rasul ballagh ma unzila ilayka mir rabbik wa in lam taf'al fa ma ballaghta risalata o messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam proclaim the message which has been sent down to you from your lord if you do not do so then you have not conveyed his message now you have to understand there there were uh, times in the life of the prophet that it was very difficult for him to uh, convey that message as it is you see because you know the akhlaq of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, there were many incidents in the life of the prophet there so many examples one of the main examples that i remember uh, that you know i i really do feel is the one when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, was uh, ridiculed by his uncle and it was uh, and his uncle said to him tabbat lak may your hands perish may your hands break and uh, as a reply to that abuse prophet sallam was given the ayahs by allah subhanahu wa taala tabbat yada abi lahab wa tab may the hands of uh, abu lahab be broken right and be perished and the fact that prophet sallam because of his akhlaq because of his high stature uh he could not have said those words himself and it was very difficult to say those words uh his uncle is being named in those ayahs and at that time you know people did not believe that this is coming from allah they they were thinking that it is coming from prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right and still prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh you know every single aya every single sura prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam recited it to the uh, the people the fourth is that it was ruled out by allah himself that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam could ever do this or change it because allah subhanahu wa taala guarantees the honesty of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when allah says wa ma yantiqu anil hawa in huwa illa wahyu yuha and he muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam does not speak from his own desires it is only an inspiration that is inspired qul ma yakunu li an ubaddilahu min talqa'i nafsi in attabi' illa ma yuha ilayhi say oh muhammad it is not for me to change in the uh, change it that the quran from my own desire i only follow that which is revealed to me so uh say o muhammad it is not for me to change in the quran for my own desire i only follow that which is revealed to me in another verse a severe punishment is promised for forging any revelation allah subhanahu wa taala says walau taqawwala alaina ba'da ba'da al-aqawil la akhadna minhu bil yamin thumma la laqatna minhu al-watin and if muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had forged a false saying attributing it to us we surely would have seized him by his right hand and then certainly have cut off his left artery imagine the intensity of the situation the harsh punishment that allah subhanahu wa taala mentioned mentions and this this uh, would happen if prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would ever uh, naud billah temper with the quran so this never happened the quran would not change the quran did not change and this is a clear message for 
us all, for anyone who is studying the Quran, who is taking the Quran forward to the masses, that we cannot change the meaning of the Quran. No one can change the wordings of the Quran. If Prophet ﷺ, who is the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is being uh, given this hard message, then imagine what others would uh, the, the punishment that other, others would get who change the meaning of the Quran. So uh, we cannot say that this, you know, this thing is written in the Quran and, you know, we cannot uh, give our own opinions about the Quran or the Kalam of Allah. Now, another question arises as far as the revelation is concerned. How, what was the amount of ayahs that came down at one time? So some people say it was 10, some say it was three, and usually uh, it was five verses at a time. Uh, sometimes there were whole surahs that came down at once. So it was different uh, depending upon different situations and events. You can uh, read in detail about this uh, on page number 80 and 81 of your book. Now, Another important topic that uh, you must know is the wisdom behind gradual revelation because a lot of people come and they do this, uh, their behest. Why was it needed? Why can't the Quran come down all at once? So the first point here is the, to strengthen the resolve of the Prophet ﷺ in front of the disbelievers. Now imagine uh, that the, the Prophet وسلم, is facing all of Mecca, all the disbelievers, all of these tribes, the leaders of the tribes and these tribesmen who are harsh, who are, uh, who are opposing the Prophet وسلم, who are bringing him down in public, in private, and they, they, they didn't leave anything in any method out to humiliate the Prophet ﷺ. So the reason why Quran came down gradually one by one, uh, one ayah at a time, slowly, according to different events, was to strengthen the resolve of the Prophet ﷺ. Now, some people are asking about the book. The book has been sent to you in your groups. Um, the name of the book, the PDF is, has been sent, is the intro, an introduction to the sciences of the Quran by Yasir Qazi. Okay. Okay. And so the next point is to simplify the memorization and understanding by the companions, because there were a large number of companions who were memorizing this and trying to understand. The third is to prove the truthfulness of the Prophet وسلم, and to prove the miraculous nature of the Quran, to reveal the laws of Islam gradually, and to ease the revelation process of the Prophet, uh, Prophet for the Prophet Now let's uh, dig more deep into this, these different points, the wisdom behind the gradual revelation. Okay, so the first is to strengthen the resolve of the Prophet ﷺ in front of the disbelievers. Let's check out different ayahs uh, that are going to explain this topic. The Prophet ﷺ was anguished and distressed by the attitude of his people towards this message. He, they ridiculed and mocked him and claimed that he was a sorcerer, a madman, or that he was possessed by the jinn. So Allah reminds him, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيدُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ Indeed, we know that your heart is trained by what they, the disbelievers, say. So by the continual revelation of the Quran and the Prophet ﷺ, to the Prophet ﷺ, he was reaffirmed in his determination and zeal. And this is what Allah alludes to when he discusses the graduality of the revelation. So in another uh, ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kadalika bihi fu'adak. Thus, it is sent down in parts that we may strengthen your heart thereby. So this was to strengthen the resolve of the Prophet right? So this can also be seen in the content of the earlier revelations in Makkah, where the stories of the prophets of old are told and how the prophets dealt with the hardships and torments that they faced from their people. In Surah Hud, after mentioning the stories of many prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes, and all that we just relate to you, Muhammad, of the news of the messengers, is in order that we may make your heart strong and firm. 
there are a number of ways in which prophet sallallahu was helped by these stories the prophet sallallahu was told to learn from the lessons of the previous prophets fasbir kama sabara ulul azmi min ar rusul therefore be patient to muhammad like the messengers of firm resolve before you did right and he sallallahu alaihi wasallam was told that the plots of the disbelievers and all their mockery of islam will do no harm to allah's plan fala yahsunka qawluhum inna na'lamu ma yusirruna wa ma yu'linun so let not their speech grieve you for verily we know what they conceal and what they reveal he sallallahu alaihi wasallam promised help from his creator creator katab allah la aghlibanna ana wa rusuli allah has ordained verily it is i and the messengers who will be victorious so this gradual method of revelation also helped to strengthen the determination of the companions these same verses inspired the companions with courage and patience and gave them the stamina they needed to withstand the persecution of the idolaters you know how these mushrikeen of makkah they persecuted the sahaba hmm? and uh, uh, sumayya radhiyallahu was the first shaheed and how bilal radhiyallahu was uh, tortured by these people so the quran came down to make these companions feel stronger so in a play in one place allah subhanahu wa taala mentions wa kullu naqussu alayka min anba'i ar-rusul ma nuthabbitu bihi fu'adak وَجَاءَكَ فِي هَذِهِ الْحَقُّ وَمَوْعِظَةٌ وَذِكْرَى لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ and all that we relate to you muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam of the news of the messengers in is in order that we make your heart strong and firm and in this has come to you the truth as well as an admonition admonition and a reminder for the believers so this is a dhikra lil mu'minin a reminder for the believers that many before you have been persecuted the same way many before you have been tortured in the same way so uh the next was to uh, the next point is to simplify the memorization and understanding by the companions so now you will know that at a particular you know that the, the quran didn't uh, exist in the form of a book but the quran was revealed in a particular order remember that that when jibril used to bring down the verses of the quran it wasn't just the verses of the quran that were brought down we are going to study this in detail inshallah in the later chapters that jibril alay salam also used to give prophets assam the instructions as where these ayahs are supposed to be placed because you would understand that a lot of different surahs were being revealed all at once all together right so maybe in the morning time there's few ayahs of surah al baqara and in the in in madina and then in the evening some ayahs of surah al imran are being re, uh, revealed and in some you know surah al am and so all of these ayahs it is it was mentioned by jibril alay salam by the uh by the order of allah subhanahu wa taala as to where these ayahs are going to be placed and all of these were in a particular order right and we uh, we know about this order because jibril alay salam every ramadan he used to recite the quran to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the tarawi and that was recited in that particular order in which we have the quran today so the sahaba even though they didn't have the quran in a book form but they used to recite it they used to memorize it that is why to make it easy for them to memorize and understand and implement the quran this came down gradually the third reason behind the wisdom of gradual revelation is to prove the truthfulness of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so the idolaters and the people of the book used to ask the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam questions in order to outwit him but every time allah would reply to their queries as ibn abbas said whenever the disbelievers brought a new question to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah would reveal to them an answer through the quran the quran itself refers to this aspect of the revelation wala yatuna ka bimithlin illa jinaka bilhaqqi wa ahsana 
التفسيرا and no example or similitude do they bring to oppose or to find fault in you except that we reveal to you the truth against this similitude and the better explanation thereof so the the reason why gradually allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed different ayahs at different occasions was as a as a, an answer to the questions and to prove that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the true prophet the fourth reason is to prove the miraculous nature of the quran so indeed one of the most outstanding miracles of the quran was that it was revealed over a period of two decades it answered many questions from believers and idolaters it created to a plethora of situations it solved a wide variety of problems it frequently commanded the prophet sallam and the believers to a course of action and yet not a single of its 6000 plus verses is contradicted by the other a human authorized authored book of the size and nature even if written instantaneously is invariable invariably full of errors so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says afala yatadabbaruna alqur'ana walaw kana min indi ghayri allah la wajadu fihi ikhtilafan kathira do they not ponder over the quran for indeed had it been from other than allah they would surely have found many contradictions in it so even though the quran came down over a period of 23 years still not a single ayah contradicts another ayah in the quran The fifth is to reveal the laws of Islam, the Sharia, in a gradual manner. Among the blessings of Allah to the companions is that He revealed to them the laws of Islam gradually, and thus made it easier for them to adopt these laws. Initially, there were no specific laws of halal and haram. The companions during the Makkan stage were being trained spiritually so that they could form the nucleus of the future. So, Muslim state this this nucleus. was for the future muslim state in medina once they had passed this stage allah then completed the revelation of the sharia in gradual steps so that they could adapt to the lifestyle of islam so you know that in makkan period the main emphasis was on strengthening the iman and the resolve and of the the mentions were of jannah and jahannam and then in medina there were the uh, revelation about the sharia but that too in a very gradual manner the sixth point is to ease the revelation process on the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so the process of inspiration or wahi was a diff- difficult very difficult one for prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as was mentioned in the last chapter at times he used to sweat sweat profoundly he even on a cold night because of the severity of the inspiration so so the process of wahi was very difficult for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that is why the, the it was needed that very small chunks of ayas came down uh, upon his heart at one time had the quran been revealed all at once it might have been too difficult for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to bear it and all of this meaning the concept of the gradual revelation only shows the concern and the high status that was given to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam since the revelation would come to him con- continually morning and evening night and day at home or while traveling and every time the angel would come to him with the quran unlike the previous prophets who would be given their books at once so the status of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was greater and higher and more magnificent from all of his fellow prophets may allah send blessings and mercy to all of them sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the quran is the most honored book to be revealed by allah and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the most honored prophet that was sent by allah and allah combined in the revelation of the quran the two procedures he first revealed the quran all at once from the lohi mafuz to the lower heavens and he then revealed it to the earth gradually to cater to the situation and needs of the people so now we come to the point where uh, the first and the last revelations are going to be discussed so there are uh, is, i would want you to read out page number 89 this is your homework about the first revelation a very moving story that has been written about the uh, the first opinion about the uh, revelation that was sent down um, the first encounter of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because you know the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to go and sit in uh, cave hira the mount of hira and uh, he used to meditate and he used to 
think about the problems that were going on in Mecca, how he can solve them, what needs to be done. He used to be very upset. And he also used to uh, remember uh, or he used to think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He used to, you know, whatever means there were to worship, he used to do that. And he used to meditate. Now, what happens is that one night, uh, Prophet Sallam, who was sitting alone in the cave in Mount Hira, Angel Jibreel came and it was very sudden because Prophet Sallam was not used to having people around. He wasn't used to having someone coming like that. And Prophet Sallam was just, uh, you know, shocked. And Angel Jibreel came and he said, read Iqra. Prophet Sallam replied, I cannot read. Angel Jibreel again grabbed him and pressed him. He pressed him very hard. Again, he said, read Iqra. Prophet said, I cannot read. I don't know how to read. And so Jibreel salam grabbed him three times. And after he released him, uh, the first verses were revealed. And those were, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Khalaq al-insana min alaq. Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram alladhi allama bil qalam. So these, uh, according to the first opinion, were the first of the ayahs, the surahs, so the ayahs revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that was in Mount Hira. Now, another uh, opinion the second opinion is that the first surah that was revealed was Surat al mudassir The third opinion, uh, the, uh, a few scholars, they say that the first surah that was revealed was Surah Al-Fatiha. And the fourth opinion is that the first uh, ayah that was revealed was the Basmallah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. As far as the last revelation is concerned, there are 11 differences of opinion. There are different people, there are different scholars, they have differences of opinion. Al-Bukhari and At-Tabari narrate from Ibn Abbas that the last verses revealed to the Prophet was, and fear the day in which you will return to Allah, then everyone will be paid what he earned and they will not be dealt with unjustly. Ibn Abbas added that the Prophet ﷺ lived nine nights after this verse was revealed. Then he ﷺ passed away. So this is the... Uh, the narration of Ibn Abbas and this he has said that Prophet Sallam before his visal uh, nine days just nine days before his visal this was the ayah that came down in another relation narration also by Al-Bukhari from Ibn Abbas states that the last verse revealed was the worst of interest Oh, you who believe, fear Allah and give up what remains from you in, uh, in interest if you are indeed believers. Another narration says that at tabri reports that Saeed ibn Musayyib narrated the final verse revealed to the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam was with the verse of loaning ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu idha tadayantum bi dainin ila ajal musamma faktubu faktubu o you who believe if you contract a debt for a fixed time write it down in another narration al hakim reports from ubay ibn kaab that the final revelation comprised of the last two verses of surah tauba laqad ja'akum rasulun min anfusikum really they has come unto you a messenger from amongst yourselves so Muslim also reports from Ibn Abbas that the final surah revealed was surah An-Nasr. So there are a lot of other uh, opinions also. I am just going to come back, come to the 11th and the last opinion. And it is uh, said that 
the last ayahs revealed well al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al islam deena today i have perfected your religion for you and have completed my favors upon you and have chosen for you islam as your religion so if you look at all of these inshallah if you go and read your book and read all the uh, opinions about the last revelation you will um, uh understand that each companion was narrating the last words to be revealed concerning a particular topic al bara ibn azib was referring to the final uh, verse revealed concerning the laws of inheritance umm salama was referring to the last verse revealed concerning the relative status of men and women concerning this verse ibn abbas statement and no verse after it abrogated it shows that he was referring to the last verse revealed concerning the laws of man slaughter and ibn abbas reported concerning surah al nasr it talks about the final complete surah that was revealed not the final verse that was revealed so you see that here you will understand that all of these according to aisha you know as it aisha radhiyallahu she has reported differently so if you go and read this uh, this portion thoroughly inshallah you will understand that different sahaba are mentioning the last revelation in a different context right they could be uh, according to different topics different areas different uh, you know this last surah that was revealed so it could be so that is why there are differences of opinion that are found now another thing that you should understand as far as revelation is concerned is the chronological order uh that allah subhanahu wa taala has revealed certain ayahs re related to one particular subject you will learn that there are different ayahs relating to the same subject but they are given giving different orders they are uh giving different understanding about that particular subject for instance about intoxicants you will see that there are three different ayahs mentioned about this so the first chronologically appearing ayah uh, for this subject was yes aluna ka anil khamri wal maisir qul fihi ma ithmun kabirun wa manafi'u lin nasi ithmuhuma akbar min nafima they ask you concerning intoxicants and games of chance say in them is great harm and also some benefit to mankind but the harm that is caused is greater than the benefit that is gained the next verse that was revealed restricted the consumption of intoxicants such that they could only be drunk after the isha prayer ya ayyuhalladhina amanu la taqrabu la taqrabu salata wa antum sukara o you who believe do not approach the prayer in a state of drunkenness so the last words revealed concerning intoxicants prohibited any amount of consumption innama yuridu ash-shaytanu an yuqi'a bainakum al-'adawata wal-baghda'a fi al-khamri wal-maisir wa yasud wa yusad sorry wa yasuddukum was sorry wa yasuddukum 'an al-dhikr 'an dhikrillah wa 'an as-salati fa hal antum muntahun shaytan only wants to excite enemy enmity and hatred between you with intoxicants so you will not then abstain so the answer of the companions to this question was yes we will abstain yes we will stop uh, taking intoxicants now the reason why uh, it is important for you to know the chronological order of these ayas is that a person is not confused about the final order regarding that topic you see because this basically explains us why uh, gradually these orders came by but if we take the the first or the second ayah regarding this uh, the hurmat of the, the intoxicants we will not be able to implement the rules of sharia properly now what do you think would have happened if verses related to one order came down all at once how do you think this relates to human psychology
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how we think. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how we react. And only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best way to uh, make us obey the order. So the hikmah is known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. So let's just uh, take a look at the next chapter, inshallah ta'ala. We'll do some discussion at the end of the class now. Jazakallah khair. Uh, we have to check out the Makki and Madani verses. I talked about this earlier. And we should know why we do we differentiate and categorize among the Makki and Madani verses. What, why do we need to differentiate and categorize? What is the reason behind this? And another thing we should know is that when we ter give this termination, uh, terminology of Makki verses, we do not mean the place of revelation was Makkah. When we say a particular verse is Madani verse, we don't mean that the, the place of the revelation was Medina. Rather, we are mentioning the era of revelation. So after the Hijra, all of the verses that were revealed are known as the Madani verses. Even if those verses were revealed at the conquest of Makkah, in Makkah, or in Hude uh, in um, Hunayn or any other place. And similarly, the Makki uh, verses mean the verses that were revealed before the Hijra. So they, the Prophet ﷺ could, could have been physically um, present at any other place, but since they were revealed before the Hijra, that is why they were called as Makki verses. So how to tell that a particular uh, verse is Makki or Madani? So number, four, number number one, it is known from traditions of the Sahaba. And number two, by analyzing the attributes of those ayahs, inshallah ta'ala, we learn about those attributes uh, quickly. But you will find this detailed information on page 100. So another homework that you have is to read out page number 100 from your book. And it's going to give you a good insight into this uh, matter. So Makki and Madani verses. Let's look at uh, the differences in situations of these verses. So in Makkah, Muslims were weak. In Medina, Muslims were in power. And for as far as the Madani verses are concerned, they had the affirmation of, ones of oneness of Allah. Sorry, oneness. Uh, you have, please do this correction. Oneness of Allah and affirmation of prophets, prophethood. In Madani verses, you will find emphasis on ibadat and muamalat. Now, in Makki verses, you will see that there are no laws of Sharia, whereas in Madani verses, you will find detailed descriptions of laws and prohibitions. In Makki verses, you will see that the target group that are uh, uh, for whom these verses have come down are the kuffar and the mushrikeen. Whereas the target groups and the people who are being talked about or talked to in the Madani verses are Ya Ahl al Kitabi, they're the Christians and the Jews, and Ya Ayyuhalladina Amanu, those who believe. In Makki verses, you will find that the subjects are related to rewards and punishments and Jannah and Jahannam, and the main emphasis on is on Aqeedah. Strengthening the aqidah, the oneness of Allah. The, in Madani verses, you will find that the subjects are, are related to socially strengthening and describing of obligations. It is more of ahkam, and it is more of the uh, more of how you we are going to treat others, other people, uh, and relationships. Now, the Makki ayahs are strong, uh, shorter. Madani ayahs are longer. And in Makkah, uh, the, there was a very strong message that was being given to the mushrikeen. So the language you will see, it is very, very strong and it hits the heart. And the, there is linguistic miracle, as, miraculous aspect. So there is a miracle in the language that you will find that would make those people who are listening to those ayahs go into a state of awe and a state of shock and they would, uh, you know, that miracle would hit them. Now, as far as the Madani verses are concerned, they are softer in language and they are, uh, they are like explanatory, self-explanatory. 
the subjective miracle aspect is there. So the miracle in the subject and the meaning is found. How things are explained, that is the miracle in the, those ayas. Namaki ayas are more uh, rhythmic and rhyming and mainly because, you know, they have an impact on the heart through that sound also. As far as the Madani verses are concerned, they're in the form of prose, they're in the form of explanation. And in most of the Madani verses, the, the rhythm is not there. So now the spe some specific characteristics of Makki revelations are that every surah that has an oath, ne, kalla, is a Makki. The oath only occurs in last half of the Quran in over 15 surahs. So you will note that the oath will appear in Makki surahs, kalla, right? Now the second is that all surahs that begin with just disjointed letters, Al Muqattaat, Huruful Muqattaat, such as Alif Lam Mim, Ha Mim, all of these are Makki, with the exception of Surat Al Baqarah and Al Imran. There are only two Madani surahs, Surat Al Baqarah and Surah Al Imran, that have Surah uh, uh, that have Huruf Muqattaat in the beginning. All the rest of the surahs that have Huruf Muqattaat are uh, Makki surahs. The third difference you'll see is that all surahs which, has, which have a verse of prostration, ayat sajda or tilawat, sajda tilawat are makki uh, in nature. All of those surahs in which sajda tul tilawat appears, okay? The fourth is all surahs which mention the stories of the previous prophets and the story of Adam and the creation are Makki with the exception of Surat Al-Baqarah. Only Surat Al-Baqarah contains, uh, in the Madani surahs contains the, uh, the story of different previous prophets or the creation of Adam alayhi salam. The fifth difference that you will know is that generally the verses in Makki revelation are short and using strong words and frequent oaths. Some specific characteristics of Madani revelations are that every verse that mentions a punishment for a crime, Hudud is a Madani. Every surah that mentions hypocrites is Madani, except Surat al ankabut Every surah that addresses the Jews and Christians is Madani. Every surah that mentions jihad is Madani. Generally, Madani verses are longer than the Makki counterparts. So what is the benefit of knowing the differences between Makki and Madani surahs? This knowledge is essential in arriving at a proper understanding and interpretation of the Quran, as it is a key to understanding the reason behind the revelation of a verse or surah. So that the fact that the verse in Alladhi farada alayka al-Qur'an al-Raadduka ila ma'ad Verily he who has given you Muhammad sallallahu the Qur'an will return you back to the place of return that is Makkah was revealed during the Hajj for example helps us understanding in understanding that Allah is consoling the Prophet sallallahu that he will eventually return to Makkah Now if you wouldn't have known where or when these ayahs were revealed you would not understand the meaning of this why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that you will be returned to that place? Which place is Allah mentioning, right? So for you to understand a particular ayah or a particular surah, you have to know whether it is Makki or Madani. This knowledge helps differentiate the abrogated verses from the non-abrogated ones. For example, if two verses deal with the same topic and give different rulings, but one is Madani, another is Makki, the ruling is taken from the Madani verse because you will know that the Madani verse came later on. Number three, it gives an insight into the life of the Prophet ﷺ. For example, in the Makki verses, the Prophet ﷺ is told by Allah to bear patiently the torments of the these polytheists. While the Madani verses, he ﷺ is told to beware of the, of the plots of the hypocrites. In each case, the reader gains a better understanding of the life of the Prophet ﷺ and the companions. Now, the fifth is why you need to know the difference between the Makki and Madani is to know the procedure and methodology of calling to Islam. How are you going to do Dawa? When you are at a place when there are mushrikeen there, when there is, uh, you know, you can be harmed by the people, uh, you will be as if you are there in a Makki era and you will know how to do Dawa there. Right. And uh, 
scholar to Islam should know, use the same methodology. Also, you would know from the Madani surahs how uh, dawa is done to the Jews or the Christians, right? How are you going to, what are, what are the logics you will give to the Jews and the Christians? Lastly, it proves the care and detail in which the knowledge of the Quran was preserved. A person cannot help but marvel at the miracle of the preservation of each and every intricate detail of the Quran. If the knowledge of where, when, and how a verse was revealed has been preserved, then how is it possible that the actual meaning and intent of the verse is not preserved? So now you will understand that each and every detail of the Quran, where it was revealed, why it was revealed, how it was revealed, what was the context, it has been saved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we know how to implement it, where to implement it, and how to use it. Okay, so uh, 